This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. I am Roby Brock. We are glad to have you with us. I am joined by Joyce Elliott, Democrat for Congress and a state senator from Little Rock, Arkansas. Good to see you as always. I'm going to be gentle with your hand with there. With that hand, yeah. So I'll let's tell everybody what happened there first. You fell down accidentally. I, uh, well, so. I did. I was leaving the Capitol one night and stepped on something that rolled. And you have to catch yourself on something. That became my right hand. This is going to so, be hard for you to shake hands with uh, those uh, yeah, those I, voters out there. But it's a way to say be gentle with me. <laughs> All right. Um, let's talk about uh, you uh, officially kicked off your campaign on Thursday of this week. Mm -hmm. And you said that one of the things that your platform is going to reflect is what you hear from constituents on the campaign trail. What are you hearing from constituents? Well, the major thing, and I, and I think this is this is consistent everywhere, but the major thing is, is about health care. Uh, I mean, I, I have lots of constituents I've heard from, for example, just not being able to pay for insulin. That's hit people really hard in my district. And of course, there, there are those folks who no longer have health insurance. And these are big deals for people. And if this is not, and people tend to think of the folks who were thrown off health insurance in, in uh, Arkansas, a lot of these are working people. So it's not people who are not trying to make it. That is a really big deal with people. And the other thing I'm hearing a great deal about is the economy. Because we, we have a, a scenario out there that the economy is great. And it is great if you are living in, uh, I guess, uh, Trump's economy or even Congressman, Congressman uh, uh, Hill's economy. Then you are doing great. But there are people, uh, if you were trying to get to the middle or if you're in the middle, you are really squeezed. and. If you are not making your life, you know, in the stock market, it's a really hard time for people. So let's yeah. stick with health care first sure. here. So there's been a lot of debate about Medicare for all. There's sure. been a lot of debate about reforming the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. There's been debate uh, to repeal the Affordable Care Act, and there's even a lawsuit working its way through mm -hmm. there. Where do you stand on that spectrum? What should be the approach that a congressperson should take? Well, I think the approach that the approach I would take is uh, uh, to try to find a way to get to universal uh, coverage. But universal coverage to me starts with where we are and improving what, what we have already. Because I think in a country such as ours, we absolutely must have the aspiration and have a way to get there. So we've got uh, what we have now with the Affordable Health Care Act. That's a, that's a platform to move to the next step and the next step. But there's no way we can do it all of a sudden. And I don't think there's going to be a way we can do it without being practical about folks who have a health insurance policy that they like and they want to keep. There's no need to dismantle that uh, to make sure we can cover other people. Because I think if we start out with a thoughtful, universal plan, no matter how people are getting health insurance, I think down the road somewhere we, we might morph into something that we'll all ha be happy with. But in the meantime, it's about just getting coverage for people who are not there and improving what we've, we've got. That, that's a crucial thing. All right, thing. you mentioned jobs also. There were yeah. two big trade announcements this week out of mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. Number one, the uh, Senate passed the United States, Mexico, Canada, mm -hmm trade agreement, the yeah. update to NAFTA. Yes. Um, would you have voted for that if you were in Congress? Well, from what I know about it at this point, yes, I would have. And one of the things that, that I really appreciate about it, when, when NAFTA was passed, there was a lot of concern from uh, factory workers, people who were union workers, that this was really going to put a squeeze on them. And with the folks who had many issues with it last time around, uh, I think were perhaps uh, a lot happier with it from what I understand about it. The, the issues that we wanted to make sure that our working people were not undermined so that we could have, and, and that was a part of NAFTA. That was one of the unfortunate outcomes. So I think there are policies in place now for our working people in our country not to be undermined for that, uh, for, for that agreement to be in place. And I I'm going to give like you a that. chance to heap praise on the president. Here. Oh, yes, yes. The U.S. China deal, the phase one portion uh -huh. of the U.S. China deal, mm -hmm. again, from what you understand of that, mm -hmm. this uh, appears to be a breakthrough, mm -hmm. uh, at least setting the stage for some uh, additional. Uh, changes, although he put the tariffs on in the first place, mm -hmm. uh, it does seem to have brought the Chinese to the negotiating table. What's your take on the U.S.-China phase one deal? Yeah, uh, well, I, I think uh, actually you're right about it's brought, I think, China to the table. But what I think we, uh, and I do want to praise the president for that, because I'm not just anti anything President Trump does if it's a good thing to do. Um, but I think we have to be more thoughtfully, though, 
about how we bring people to the table because in the in the process of doing that we we are now having to pay farmers billions of dollars because we upset something that was already working for them and farmers were not looking to get a check from the government uh, you know every month they were looking to to sell what they were growing and it, you, I don't think we need to get in, we should get into the, the thing of um, no matter the means, the means of getting to something uh, do matter. Mm -hmm. And while the outcome is something that I think can move us to a higher platform and perhaps have a better agreement, I'm not sure that we couldn't have done that had we been more thoughtful about it in the first place and, and save billions of dollars and farmers in this case would not see their, their corn, their soybeans and everybody else seeing Brazil, you know, getting that market. Mm -hmm. And so we lost a market that we're actually paying for to get to this point. If we understand diplomacy better, which is something that I really think Washington needs a great deal of, we don't have to give away the store to get to some place to say, look at what we did because it really hurt too many people to do that. I got to ask you lastly yeah. here before our time runs out, uh, impeachment trial is about to begin in the yes. U.S. Senate. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have told me before, I, I don't know if I've asked you this question as bluntly mm -hmm. as this before. The president's been accused of abusing his power of office to withhold foreign aid uh, to Ukraine, sure. as well as um, there has been a blocking of Congress's oversight abilities mm -hmm. there. And he's tried to start an investigation allegedly of, um, of the Bidens in there. Is, is all of that an impeachable offense? Because I get from our Republican congressional delegation now, they don't feel like that rises mm -hmm. to the level of impeachment. Well, I'm not sure. I, I, I think it does rise to the level of impeachment because what, what I think we need to be careful about is people tend to think impeachment means we have removed him from office. And what the impeachment actually is an investigation to see if, if uh, whatever has happened merits further, uh, further inquiry. And if, if when you inquire, if you see issues that are uh, strong enough that you think this should actually go to trial, so to speak, just like an indictment. It doesn't say the president is, is, is uh, wrong to the point that we are going to remove him from office. This should go further and let's have a trial. So when you, when you have uh, an appropriation by the Congress, and that's your job, it is absolutely the president's responsibility to execute. And in this case, we specifically have what's called the impoundment uh, act. You cannot, if you're the president, you don't get to impound and redirect what the Congress has said you must do just because you would like to have somebody do an investigation. So just that alone is really uh, bothersome. But since that time, just yesterday, you know, I think Nancy, Nancy Pelosi did a good thing in that she she didn't jump right into the she didn't jump on the impeachment bandwagon at first, mm -hmm. and she was thoughtful. She waited to see if there is something here that merits even having the impeachment inquiry. And just yesterday, you know, we find out that uh, a, a nonpartisan a nonpartisan body uh, has uh, reported to us, yeah, what the president the did broke the law. Office, yeah, the government, right. yeah, the GAO that we call it. Um, they've said, yes, this absolutely breaks the law, and it does. We can't have presidents being going rogue like that. All right. Yeah. She's uh, Senator Joyce Elliott. She's running for Congress, uh, challenging uh, Republican incumbent French Hill. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Oh, I hope thank to have you, you so back much. soon. All so, right. I'm all looking right. forward Take to it. Take care of that hand there. I all will. Right. All right. All right. We're back with more right after this.